study time and space complexity and see the concept how it affects the various data structures in the programming language. So let's see time and space complexity for a data structure. Now the fundamental concept for a time and space complexity is its dynamic memory allocation, recursion and performance analysis. Now what is a dynamic memory allocation? It is when the variables are declared at that time we don't actually assign the value memory. When we are dynamically working on it using pointers, so that time when it actually gets the value and comes into the operation, the memory is allocated. Recursion is calling a function by itself and performance analysis will see how we analyze it with time and space. Now the performance analysis, there are problems and algorithms to solve them. Problems and problem instances, that is for one problem when we divide our program into small small instances how it happens. Now let's take a simple example sorting a data in ascending order. Now the problem definition or the problem is taken means it is sorting. We're going to sort the data. Problem instances sorting of data if we have the numbers 2, 3, 9, 5, 6 and 8 over here. We need to sort them out. Now there are various algorithms which are there for sorting these numbers. The basic ones are bubble sort, merge sort, quick sort and selection sort. So what is the best algorithm for the problem and how do we judge it? So that is what it is used for analyzing the performance of any algorithm. Now performance ana analysis can be done on time complexity and space complexity. Let's see what is time. Time complexity is how much time does it take? If we take an example of sorting the data then how much time does it take to sort those particular elements and space complexity is how much memory does it take. Now space complexity of an algorithm is amount of memory it needs to run and compile the program. This is a technical definition for space complexity. It specifies the amount of temporary storage required for running the algorithm. We do not count storage required for input and output when we are working with the same type of problem and with different algorithms. So the printf and scanf will not be counted but actually the loops which work to actually run the particular algorithm is counted and space needed by algorithm consists of two components. The fixed static part is the first component over here. It is independent of characteristics example number of inputs number of outputs this part includes the instruction space that is the space required for the actual code. Space for simple variables, space for constants and fixed size component variable. Let CP be the space required for the code segment that is the static part of my code is known as CP. So that will be denoted throughout for calculating the space complexity as CP. Now the second part is the variable or the dynamic part. That consists of the space needed by the component variables whose size is dependent on the particular problem instance at runtime. So dynamic part if you see varies at the runtime. Space needed by the reference variable and the recursion stack space. So recursive variables will also be counted. Let SP be the space of the dynamic part. So overall space required by the program that is the space complexity SP is equal to CP plus SP. So this is my static part and this is my dynamic part. Now let's take an example over here. Void main we have four variables over here int x y z sum enter the three numbers so x y z is printed sum is equal to x plus y plus z print f the sum is percentage d sum. So we've this is a small code which is executing so what is the space complexity for the program there are no instance characteristics and the space needed by x y z and sum is independent of instance characteristics the space for each integer variable is 2 that is we know that integer variable takes 2 bytes if you need to see how much space each variable that is integer character take kindly refer to the programming in C videos where the character set and op 
operations are shown which shows exactly how much byte of memory each variable takes so space for each integer variable is 2 bytes we have four integer variables and space needed by x y z and sum are 4 into 2 is equal to 8 bytes there are no runtime variables which are changing so sp is equal to cp plus sp we know this is the static part this is the dynamic part sp is equal to 8 plus 0 so sp is equal to 8 so the space complexity for this program is 8 bytes now let's see what is the time complexity time complexity of an algorithm is an amount of cpu time it needs to run to completion from the start to the end time required tp to run a program p also consists of two components the fixed component that is the compile time which is independent of the problem instance which is denoted by c a variable part which is a run time which depends on the problem instance tp so the time complexity that is the time required tp is equal to c the fixed part and tp the run time instance of my code let's see how it works the time complexity is again divided into three types the best case time complexity the worst case time complexity and the average case time complexity let's see what is the best case time complexity it is the efficiency of an algorithm for an input of size n for which the algorithm takes the smallest amount of time so that is the best we know when it takes the minimum time it is the best case complexity now what is an average case complexity it gives the expected value of tn that is the time complexity average case is used when worst case and the best case does not give any necessary information about the algorithm behavior then the algorithm's efficiency is calculated on random input so whenever we calculate the output on the random inputs it is the average case time complexity the worst case the efficiency of an algorithm for the input of size n for which the algorithm takes the longest or the largest amount of time is the worst case if you take an example if you're trying to search our books in a pile of books and we find the book at the bottom of the pile then it is the worst case complexity if we find that book at the first instance then it is the best case and when we find it at the middle it is the average case complexity time complexity is calculated on the basis of operation count find the basic operation a is equal to a into b this code takes one unit of time because it has only one operation or one execution statement to be done so it takes one unit of time now let's take a time complexity example we have to take it on the step count x is equal to a plus b single statement so the step count is 1 for i is equal to 1 to i less than equal to n i plus plus it should be executed n number of times so the time step count and the time complexity is n now this statement takes one time we know and for i is equal to 1 to i less than equal to n takes n time so it is n for this and n for this so it becomes n square execution for x is equal to a plus b so this is how the time complexity using a step count is calculated now let's find out the time complexity for the bigger problem statement let's take this code to find the sum of numbers it's an algorithm to find the sum so there are step this is the frequency and this is the total amount of time it takes and this is the final output so sum this is an algorithm this is a function declaration so it's zero for i is equal to 1 to n this will not be there i'm sorry okay this is there semicolon it is there so it is executed only once because there's a semicolon so there won't be any statement which is executed the execution is n plus 1 and the total will be n plus 1 for j is equal to 1 to m so how many times will it be executed this won't be there so n number of m plus 1 times it will be executed because every n number of time this will be executed m plus 1 time so this is n into m plus 1 which will be executed now this particular statement s is equal to s plus a of ij will be executed n into m times so 
first once the instance will be executed n into m time so total is n into m return s will be written one so frequency is also once it will be returning once and one and finally when we sum them up all together the time complexity for this statement is 2 nm plus 2 n plus 2 as you add them all up we get this time complexity so this is how the time and the space complexity for any code independent on the programming language can be calculated and data structures deals with the simple time and space complexity for each and every code thank you